I love that song by Toby Mac. Steal my show. If you wanna steal my show. That's a beautiful song. But I'm not gonna sing. And so, we are still in our theme for um, this month, Steady My Heart. And I just, again, that's taken from Psalms chapter 23, which describes the relationship between the ship and the shepherd. And so that is a picture of our relationship with God. Uh, he is our shepherd, and we are the sheep. So last um, Sunday, last week, we learned, or David had painted for us a very beautiful picture of our God as he is the provider. He, uh, he said that because the Lord is our shepherd, we do not have, we do not lack anything. He is our Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yireh. He is our provider. And the message was, we do not have to go around pursuing the things that enslaves us anyway because God has provided everything for us and that we can rest on the green pastures, satisfied, filled, and with a steady heart. Steady heart means to have peace and to just have joy. So today, we'll continue that um, message. Now we are on verse 4. Okay? And verse 4 tells us of, or paints for us a picture of our God as our protector. It says like this, even though... Whoa. Woke up everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Maybe somebody was uh, sleeping. It says this, this way. David painted for us a picture. Yes, even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They Comfort me. So, today we're going to be talking about God as our protector. Because that verse there talks about fear. Now, fear is a reality. Fear has been with us ever since the creation of the world. Man have fear. And so if anybody here would say that they don't have fear, you're lying. Okay, because everyone have fear. And all over the Bible you will find that God has encouraged people not to fear. One example is when Joshua took over the leadership when Moses uh, died or passed away, God told Joshua to be, to have courage and do not be afraid or be courageous and be strong. That simply means do not be afraid because the reason why God or even the Bible, throughout the Bible you will see that the Bible or the Word of God encourages us to fear not because again fear has a negative effect in our lives. It has a devastating negative effect. Now, let me give you some facts about fear, what fear can do to us. Fear can cause panic. When you fear, it can cause panic. And now, there is a number one rule in survival. Do not panic. If you want to survive, if you are in trouble, do not panic because if you panic, you know, it causes a wrong decision. You know, we just, uh, we just heard uh, a week ago about the uh, accident 
on that limousine that caught fire. Everybody heard that? Okay. Now we, we rationalize about, we say like, how, how can they, you know, get, did not get out of that limousine? They could have just break the window and, you know, we, we kind of like rationalize and make our own um, ideas of why they did not get out of that car. Well, if you are in that limousine and then fear sits in, then panic sits in. And again, when you panic, you take disparate action that has a negative, and normally it has a negative effect to it. Okay, so that's uh, number one uh, negative effect of fear is that we panic. Fear paralyzes. Again, there was a bad news uh, that we have been watching, uh, I think it's in Ohio, about these three women that were kidnapped. And again, we rationalize, we think, why didn't just they go out? Okay, why, why didn't it just, you know, they, they go out of that or at least uh, did something to escape from their captor? Well, again, fear, they were under fear. They were beaten and they were threatened and uh, the, the man that uh, captured or kidnapped them did something to, in, you know, to plant fear in their hearts. And then when, they, when you fear, it paralyzes. The only time that they got out is that when one of the women, women you know, finally have courage and was no longer subject to fear. He, she, you know, get out and start screaming. So fear paralyzes. It is the opposite of faith because faith allows us to move forward while, while fear keeps us in a place without any progress at all. Now, there are other things that fear can cause. Now, fear leads to worries. When you fear, you worry. Now, I've done some uh, research of what worries can do to a person. Here are three things. A recent study shows that there is a high correlation between worry and incidence of coronary heart disease. So if you fear, you worry. When you worry, you will have heart problem. Okay? You will have heart problem. Next one. Worry, stress, and anxiety can weaken your immune system and make you prone to infections. So when you, you easily catch flu that is normally an infection or a virus, maybe because you worry too much. Okay, so there is a um, negative effect to that. And number three, prolonged periods of worry can also take its toll on your mind. Those who repeat, repeatedly worry about an issue may eventually develop depression. So worry okay, can cause a lot of negative things in a person. But David wrote to us in Psalms chapter 23, verse 4, that will make us steady our heart. And so this message today is just fitting for mothers because mothers are warriors. And that's, I never said warriors. Worry years. You worry a lot. Amen. Amen. You know when your kids are not home yet? The dad is sleeping good and snoring. But the mom stays awake. It's like my wife always wake me up. Check if the kids are already home. And I always say, they're not home yet. How do you know? I did not hear any noise. <laughs> but I can, I can sleep good, but she will stay awake. And so, let's look at Psalms uh, 23 verse 4 now, because David said, even though I walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I'm going to talk about three things here, but the first thing I want to talk is the negative part of it. David said that even though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, meaning there are times that, or not even times, but all the time, especially in this world, we live in a world where there is so much evil. There is so much death. But the biggest comfort that David had and tells us when we go through the valley of death is that God is with me. He said, I will fear no evil. I not, I'm not worried about anything that is evil or something bad that is going to happen to me because God is with me. Say that with me. God is with me. Tell that person next to you. God is with me. Amen. God is with me. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have those promises that God is never going to leave us nor forsake us. He will always be with us. That is a promise. Now, to gain a better understanding of what David means, because, again, he, this is a relationship. He gives us a picture of a relationship between God and us as a ship and a shepherd relationship. Go to uh, the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse 34 to 36. And this is what... Uh, David told King Saul when he presented himself to fight against Goliath. And Saul said, well, you're only a boy. You know, you cannot fight this giant. He's been fighting ever since he was a small kid. And so, David, this is what David told King Saul. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock. I went after it and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistines will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. Amen. Hey, so... That gives us a better picture of what David means when he says that the Lord is our shepherd, that he is not afraid because God is with him. You see, when the shepherd takes his flock into the green pastures, and last Sunday I described to you uh, what kind of animal is uh, the sheep. You know, it, has, it doesn't have any sense of direction. Um, it has to be guided all the time. Um, it doesn't have a GPS system. You know, it cannot go home by itself. They're, it, it's, they're lost. Okay? So, just picture with me. When a shepherd takes his sheep or his flock into the green pastures, what are the sheep doing? They're just eating. They're just eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. They don't have to worry about their surroundings. Whose worry is that? The shepherd. You see? The shepherd is the one who worries. The shepherd is the one watching around if there are any lion or there are any bear that prowls around. That is the worry of the shepherd. And David said here is that when one of the sheep or one of the lamb, maybe a baby lamb, is being captured or taken by a lion, 
The shepherd, according to David, says here, the shepherd doesn't just sit around and say, well, I lost that one. If you go back, if you go to the book of Luke, when Jesus gave the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus said that even just one is lost, he will leave the 99 back behind and look for the one that is lost. So, again, the picture is that when a lion or a predator comes and snatch a lamb or a sheep, the shepherd will spring into action. He will literally go after the lion or a bear and strike it and literally take away the or take back the lamb or the sheep from the jaws of a lion. And he said, when he tur- if the lion turns against me, I will kill the lion. See, that is the picture that David is giving to us. Is that our Lord is a shepherd. We are the sheep of his pasture. And when we get into trouble, when we are caught by a lion, Jesus or God himself doesn't just say, well, I lost that one. Goodbye, you're the meal of the lion now. See, the whole world is a valley of death. Evil is all around us. The devil, the Bible tells us that the devil is a roaring lion looking for his dinner. But Jesus said, fear not, I have overcome the world. You see, Sin is destructive. Sin is like a roaring lion. Satan is a troublemaker, but sin is destructive. When we are under the care of our Lord, many times we get into trouble. Amen? How many of us haven't gotten into trouble yet? All of us got have gotten into trouble. And so, picture yourself. All of us are the sheep of his pasture. And our God is our shepherd. And the whole world is a death valley. And the lion is prowling around seeking whom he may devour. We get into a trouble ourselves. But you know what? The comforting thing about this is that God is with us. That every time we get ourselves into, the tr- into trouble, every time sin got a hold of us, God will literally grab us from the jaws of the enemy. Amen. 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 That is why Paul can say, I know whom I have believed And I am convinced that he is able to keep what he had promised. God, he keep his promise that whenever we are in trouble, God is always there for us. You know, Jesus said he is the good shepherd. And when the world is in trouble... When we got into this mess of sin, Jesus or God himself not just sitting on the throne in heaven, when we got into trouble, the good shepherd went into action. He fought the lion on Mount Calvary. He fought the lion on the cross himself. But a good picture about this is that you are not there. When Jesus fought the devil and paid for your sins, you are not there. Where were you? You were not even born yet. 
See, what I'm saying is this. When the sheep or the flock is eating and eating and eating, the shepherd did not say, Hey, one of you got caught by a lion. Come, let's fight. Now the sheep just keep eating and eating and eating. No worries at all. See, David did not just paint this picture so that, you know, you and I will feel good. But the thing is, the reality is that the, the lion, the bear that comes and attacks us is sin. And sin is destructive. Okay? I've repeated that so many times. God doesn't have to lift a finger. You see, when this is, this is what we have been taught and this is what we believe. So many times we think that if we sin, God is going to, is waiting with a baseball bat and give you a whack on the head. No. It is the sin that destroys us. Again, God doesn't have to lift a finger. But the picture that David is, is showing us here is this. That whenever we get into trouble, and the trouble I'm talking about is sin. Whenever we get into trouble, God is going to get up and literally take you out of that trouble. And Jesus did that on Mount of Calvary. Amen. And you were not there. You were not there. What I'm saying is this. When you are not part of the fight, because Jesus already won the victory. Remember when he said to the disciples, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. You see? Our part is to put our faith on the shepherd. That is our part. To put our faith on the shepherd himself. He did not call us to fight against the lion. He already paid for your sins. And when you are being attacked, and if you are being accused, Jesus is the one standing for us. First John tells us that he is the one who stands before God for you and for me. That's a good shepherd that we have. He is always with us. And when the other thing when he said he is always, he is always with us is that what he has done for us on the cross was not just for them before, but it was to pay for your sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is not going back to the cross for your sins yesterday or for tomorrow. He already paid for it all. That's why we can have victory. If we trust our shepherd. If we trust our Lord. Again, when we are in trouble, when one of us is in trouble, the ship just keep eating. Comforted by the presence of the shepherd. Now, the next thing that says there, put that back out, uh, the verse chapter 4, uh, verse 4. Even though I walk to the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Okay. The next thing that, that uh, keep uh, David comforted is not just the presence of the Lord, but it said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, there are two things that a shepherd carries. The rod and the staff. The rod is for, for what? Sheep and whack you all sometimes, right? But why, why did David say, they comfort me? See, the rod is like this, okay? The rod is like that. And David said, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Now, what is the difference between the rod and the staff? 
The rod is shorter. Staff is longer. I'm going to show a picture of that later on. But the main purpose of the rod, okay, are two things. This is to, for protection and for discipline. For protection and discipline. And so the rod is used by the shepherd whenever a predator comes in or a lion comes in. The, the rod is used by the shepherd to protect the sheep. But it has also other purpose. It is to discipline. So when, when the, the sheep are walking, and sometimes they get wayward, they get hit by the rod to stay close. But why is it, okay, that when the rod is applied, David said, it comforted me. How many of us, let me ask the kids, when your parents or your dad applies the rod on you, how many of you are comforted? <laughs> we don't like that, right? That's ouch. Here in America, you know, they, they say that you cannot use the rod, but the Bible said spare the rod and spoil the child. So, use the rod. Don't just use it uh, in an abusing manner. So, why is it comforting when the rod is applied? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of your shedding blood. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement. Listen to this. That word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when ye, he rebukes you. Because the, Lord's discip the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as sons. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all that human fathers who discipline us and we have respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers discipline us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness, no discipline seems pleasant at that time, but painful later. On however, it produces the harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the reason why David said that the rod comforts him. Because on that chapter, the, or that uh, scripture that we read in Hebrews chapter 12, First, it describes that God disciplines us because He loves us. Discipline is because He loves us. Verse 8, he, dis he disciplines us because we are His true children. And then the last one is that it produces peace. The reason why David said it comforts, even though he got hit by a rod, it comforts him because he knew that God is there and he loves us and because we are his true children and it produces peace. The problem sometimes is that we are so Americanized. We have adopted the American way when God has his own different way. The American way is that when we are disciplined, we think we're being abused. And that is one of the things that we need to grow from. Because there are times that 
When the Lord is leading us into the green pasture, a lot of times we get out of the way, we become wayward. And the shepherd, the shepherd will strike to keep us in the fold. But a lot of times instead of being comforted knowing that God is watching over us when he disciplines us, we get mad. Right? That is the problem that we have. We think that God don't like us. We get mad at him when something happens when he's disciplining us. The very first thing that we do when God disciplines us, when something bad happens to us, is we get mad at God and we don't show up where? church no more. We, instead we say, okay God, you don't like me, you, you discipline me, then guess what? I'm away. But that is the wrong thing to do. Because, you see, when you're being touched by the rod, meaning that God is there. Isn't it? Amen. Meaning that God is there. When we are no longer disciplined by God, if He is not disciplining us, that means goodbye. Go be eaten by the lion. That is not comforting. The comforting thing is that when you are being hit by the rod, you are being disciplined. And that rod is also for protection against the predator. And that is, that's what David said, they comfort me. So whenever God disciplines us, we should be glad. Because he is loving us. Because if it is not your child, you don't care, right? If you see somebody out there going crazy, and if it's not your child, you probably have concern. But you don't worry about them because they're not. I mean... You know when your kids are not home yet and you hear the ambulance? <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Lord, please, it's not them. Right? But if, you know, then your kids come home, oh, thank God. That's because you worry. When you're a parent, you, you, you worry about your kids. And that's what the, the David is trying to draw a picture for us here. Our shepherds, our shepherd cares for us, and that's why he applies the rod. And then he said, your staff. The staff is a different from a rod. The staff looks like this, and it is longer. The rod is shorter. The staff is like this. It's long, and it has a curved end. You know what is that used for? When a sheep get lost or fall into a cliff, he will use that to put on the neck to rescue. The other purpose of that is when a shepherd notices something wrong with a sheep, he will put that around his neck and bring him closer for examination for examination he will examine of what is wrong and that paints for us a picture of the, of the love and the grace of God yeah. David understood this very clearly because David has been hit by the rod. At the same time, he was also pulled back by the staff. Remember when David messed up? The Lord applied the rod to him. When he messed up with Bathsheba, When he murdered Uriah, he got out of the Lord's will. Listen to what the 
uh, David, uh, when he was rebuked by the prophet Nathan in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. This is the rod being applied to David. Nathan said, why did you despise the word of the Lord? By doing what is evil in his eyes, you struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with a sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity upon you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this in, these things in the broad daylight before Israel. So David messed up. David got out of the, of, of the flock. And he got whipped when he killed Uriah and took Bathsheba. The, the word of the Lord came to him. David, you are going to pay for your sins. This is, going to, this is what's going to happen. So the rod was applied on David. As a matter of fact, the son that he had with Bathsheba died. He died and that was, that was the discipline of the Lord. And the discipline of the Lord did not take place because he hated David. The discipline came because he loved David. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that David was a man who, who is after God's own heart. Because he was a man of God. And so the, the discipline that David received was not because God hated him, but because God loved him. The discipline that David received from the Lord is because he was a true son of God. The discipline that David received from God was to give him peace and to correct him. And he was comforted by that. Now here is the staff. Here is the staff now in chapter 51 of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 51 now says this, and we know that... We know that uh, Chapter, Psalms chapter 51 says this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Next. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and just, justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner part. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. This is the picture that David paints for us. See, the rod was applied. He was disciplined. But you know what? The longer staff restore David. What that is, what that staff represents is the grace and the love of God. That whenever we get into trouble, whenever we get wayward, whenever there is something wrong with us, it is the love and the grace of God that reaches out to us to bring us closer to our shepherd so that he can examine us. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. That is comfort. That is peace. Knowing 
not only God strikes us with a discipline, He also brings us closer to Him. And God was more than willing to forgive David. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This gives us joy. This gives us peace. Knowing that God is there, God is disciplining us, and that His grace and His mercy is always like a welcome open arms for each one of us. We all have, we are like a sheep that have gone astray. We are like the prodigal son who have run away from his father's house far, far away, but the father's love was always there waiting for him. And that is comfort to each one of us. No matter how much you think how bad you are, the staff of the Lord can still reach you and bring you closer to him. The rod is shorter. The staff is longer. Show that picture, the last picture. The shorter part is this way. That to protect you from whatever comes your way. The shorter rod is pointed this way to protect us from predators and the things that are around us. But a longer staff is pointing upwards that brings us closer to the Lord. That is peace. Whenever we get into trouble, look back to the cross. Because Jesus has already fought for you with his rod and his staff. Jesus has already paid for you so that you can have life and have it to the fullest. All we've got to do is go back to the cross. That is comforting to know that Jesus has already fought for you and for me. That there is no sin big enough that he cannot rescue you. That there is no stubbornness that we have that he cannot take away by disciplining us. Thy rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, why it is comforting to know that Jesus has already fought for us? It's because in this world, it is a valley. It is a dangerous world. And we fall short all the time. We make mistakes all the time. And the devil's job is always to accuse you. But every time the devil accuses you of your wrongdoing, of your falling short, tell him, the rod and the staff of my shepherd comforts me. The rod and the staff of my shepherd bring me back to him. That's something that is very comforting. That is something that gives you peace and a steady heart. All we've got to do whenever we get out of the fall of God is go back to him. Thy rod and your staff. The death that Jesus paid for our sins on the cross, they comfort us. He is that good shepherd that we have. Aren't you glad that you have that good shepherd? Amen. Amen.
Amen. So do not worry about so much what, you know, if you messed up or if you fall short. Because Jesus has already paid for your sin. You know, a lot of Christians, we worry so much about so many things. We don't have to worry so much about so many things. Jesus already did it all. And that is why he said, he told us, in this world you will have many troubles, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The devil has been defeated. Amen. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we can have life and to have it to the fullest. So that we can continue to enjoy the green pastures that God has led us to. So that we can continue to enjoy and just drink of the water that he has provided for us. Spring of living water that is in us. We can continue to enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Because again, our shepherd have already overcome the lion and the bear. Do you belong to the flock of God? The only place you're in danger is when you are outside of the fold. Jesus wants you to be in his flock.